Woo-hoo. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I'm cat owner and football guy Brandon Perna. But dang, London takes the phrase cat lady to a whole new level. Honestly, though, I dropped some serious sterling <laughs> on an OnlyFans to see what that odd couple gets up to between the sheets at home. The Bills may have played in London, but they were given the French guillotine. Jamar Chase is indeed... I'm open. I'm always fucking open. At 7-Eleven. 15 receptions for Jamar Chase this week. Zach Moss proved Moss does not grow on a rolling stone as the surprise performer this week. The Patriots are unbelievably terrible. My quarterback and coach seem to hate each other. The Ravens choke so hard, this was the only face John Harbaugh could make. And today, I'm gonna reveal the real winners and losers from NFL Week 5. As we do every week, we're starting with the Blop 10 plays. The Blop 10 plays of the week because who gives a shit about tops? Number 10, the Giants get their first turnover of the season, but it was their second one that hits the Blop 10, 102 yard touchdown, which was the longest play of the season and the Giants first first half touchdown of the season. The Giants had three takeaways in this game and were still trailing by 11. Number nine, Aiden Hutchinson had a really impressive interception. How long before Dan Campbell asked Asks him to play Iron Man football, playing both ways. Number eight, Honey Badger. That's right, the Honey Badger got a pick six against the Patriots. Second straight week, Mac Jones has thrown more touchdowns to the opposing defense than his own team. Mac Jones and Tom Brady are now tied for pick sixes at Foxborough at four. <laughs> Number seven, a trick play touchdown to rookie Sam Laporta, who now has as many career TDs as Kyle Pitts. Wait. I thought this was the trick play for the 49ers and George Kittle. Oh crap, we are living in a simulation. You mean to tell me two Iowa tight ends scoring touchdowns on their first place teams in the exact same way with throws from quarterbacks nobody wanted happened this week? Blop six, Tyreek Hill tries to give the ball to his mom. How sweet, but a fan intercepts it. Honestly, I'm siding with the fan here too. Tyreek Hill has 75 career touchdowns. She can have any one of those. But that fan got his hands on that ball fair and square. He gets to keep it. Blop five. The real Lions trick play that got missed by the broadcast. This snap, direct snap, that goes through the center's legs, through Jared Goff's legs, and right to David Montgomery. Holy shit. I have never seen this before. I don't think in the NFL. If you've seen one of these, please tell me where else you have seen it. Shout out to John Boy Football for posting this on Twitter. Block four, the Colts defense stopping Derrick Henry on fourth and one in the red zone. Zaire Franklin dethrones the king right here. Just 43 rushing yards for Henry and Zaire leads the league in tackles with 46. Usually a stat for a bad defense, but not the Colts. Block three, a couple Falcons catches. Uh, Drake London had a great catch in the fourth quarter. The only good thing anyone named Drake produced this week. And Bijan Robinson used his ass to catch the football here. Kind of a metaphor for playing with Desmond Ritter, I think. Number two, TJ Watt has eight sacks to lead the league right now, but he's also first place in KOs thanks to this right hook on Zay Flowers. Honestly, Watt's going to, he's gonna have environmental protection groups on his ass all week once they see how he treats flowers. And number one, my real knockout punch at numero uno, uno goes to George Kittle. No, not for his three touchdowns on just three receptions. Anyone in a Shanahan offense can do that. It's for doing that while having a fuck the cowboy shirt on under his uniform. Let's start a GoFundMe to help pay for <laughs> this hero's fine the NFL's gonna give him this week. And Blob Zero, today the zero stands for a grade of zero, okay? The Vikings fumbled on the very first play of the game. Their eight fumbles lost, most in the NFL. I'm not sure if Minnesota's first play or last play was worse, but here's Big Kirko not even getting a chance to throw a Hail Mary because he got sacked. The Vikings' longest run in this game came on a fake punt. The only thing the Vikings can do is throw. They're one-dimensional, which is better than the Broncos, who are currently uh, no-dimensional. Worst luck goes to Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson won the genetic lottery, only to see all of the cells in his body take the exact wrong blows every week this season. He's been hurt in three of the four games he's played in so far. Shook it off week one, concussed week two, and then got a grade three AC joint sprain in his shoulder this week. He's going to miss some time, and sadly, we haven't really been able to enjoy Richardson. This pass had me jizzed for the rest of the game. 
It's like I keep sitting down to watch a good movie, one I've really wanted to see, and 10 minutes in, something forces me to stop. Internet goes out, baby starts crying, gotta bail mom out of jail again, all the typical things that stop you from watching movies. Richardson's so promising that for the first time since he took an NFL snap, I do not want to see Gardner Minshew on the field. That's how high I am on Richardson. However, uh, this Gardner will help the Colts live off the land with efficiency. No touchdowns, no interceptions, no sacks, no fumbles, just 112 passer rating and another near 80% completion rate. And yeah, somewhere Jamar Chase was catching a football. I'm always fucking open. Winners, narcotics, speed, cocaina. The Dolphins are fast, maybe the fastest team ever. And we need an official nickname for them since the seven fastest speeds clocked this season all belong to Dolphins. Now I've heard Sultans of Speed, Greatest Show on Surf, some like the Legion of Zoom. I think that's lazy and derivative. So I'm going with phenomenally fast porpoises feasting on their fucking foes, all spelled with PHs, of course. I kind of like Sultans of Speed too, I guess. Winning stats, quarterback CJ Stroud sets a new record for most passes by a rookie without an interception, 186. Previous was Dak at 176, Tom Brady at 162. But for as much love as we've been showering CJ with, we need to make Desmond Ritters wet with our love of showers, showering together as well. He has an even more impressive winning stat as he's never lost at home, ever. 5-0 at home, so far in the NFL with the Falcons, and he was undefeated at home in college. Plus, he had 329 passing yards, a passer rating of 111, and got the Falcons into field goal range after C.J. Stroud threw a lead-taking touchdown to Dalton Schultz with less than two minutes on the clock. He deserves some praise, Ritter does. Quarterback winner, this was almost Justin Fields. But let's be honest, DJ Moore was unstoppable. This was almost Jared, nobody beats Goff, but three touchdowns against a winless Panthers team doesn't cut it. So it goes to Clock Purdy. Four touchdowns on just 24 throws, highest passer rating this week at a buck 44 in a complete evisceration of the Dallas Cowboys. Watching him squash the hopes of America's team technically, I think makes him a terrorist. Losing quarterback, while Mac Jones certainly qualified again, Sadly, two picks, the lowest passer rating uh, in the league this week at 30.5. I've got to give it to Dak Prescott. We've accepted that McCorkle is a McCorkle. I just praise Dak, though, for his ball security. And in prime time against a good team, Dallas got spanked. And not the fun, kinky way like you might playfully do during lovemaking. More like it's 1956 and every dad's got his belt hanging on the wall. Dak tossed three picks. George Kittle had as many touchdown receptions as Dak had picks. In terms of expectations versus performance, Dak was the biggest disappointment this week. And somewhere, Jamar Chase is indeed. I'm always fucking open. This week's Kirk Cousins Award, well that goes to Lamar Jackson. What's the Cousins Award? It's an award that goes to the quarterback that no matter what he does, his team loses anyway. And Lamar, his receivers recorded seven drops in this game. Third most by a team since 20-13. Everyone is guilty. Andrews, Flowers, Bateman, and Aguilar. Which sounds like a law firm. And if it was a law firm, the charges would have been dropped immediately. Plus, the Ravens fumbled four times in this game, losing two. Lamar received PFF's highest passer grade this week. So yeah, this is exactly what this award was created for. Winning ending? The Steelers game. Everything changed when this Ravens punt was blocked. Was this a touchdown or a safety? I think a touchdown, I really do, but fortunately that didn't really matter. After the safety, Pittsburgh settles for a field goal. Then Gunnar Olszewski fumbles on the punt return. Oh no! If Bill Belichick cuts a white skill player, it's because he's bad, guys. Second huge gaffe of the season for Gunnar, by the way. My underrated save is this tackle by Rodney Williams. That kept that play from turning into a scoop and score, which set up Joey Porter Jr.'s first career interception in the most crucial juncture of the game. Speaking of Pickett, Kenny 
audibles to his pickings for a touchdown with a minute left in Alex Highsmith, which is what I call Alex Smith when he's recovering from surgery, shuts the door on the weirdest game of the week with a strip sack recovered by TJ Watt, who was penalized for taking his helmet off on the field. TJ Watt is football royalty but even he's not beyond the rules of the game. Ooh, was that Jamar Chase catching another football somewhere? I'm always fucking open. <laughs> Winners, Patriots, for proving me right this week. I dropped this Patriots video on Saturday and was a little worried that the Pats might come out and beat a very suspect Saints team making me look dumb. Instead, they lost to Derek Carr and the Saints 34 to zero. Yeah, back-to-back -back weeks, Bill Belichick suffered the worst loss and the biggest shutout of his head coaching career. In terms of unprecedented Bill Belichick accomplishments, I'm a little scared we're going to see him laughing and happy in a press conference this week. Things are so bad for New England that when they lined up for the fake tush push, a well-designed play, mind you, they fumbled the ball on the pitch to the Saints. Carr had less than 200 passing yards and this asphyxiation of patriotism. Losers, the United Kingdom, as they were treated to the great British flagging show. The sun is shining when it comes into your mouth. <laughs> when the Bills and Jags met in London for the Jaguars' second straight London game this season, there were 19 flags thrown in this game. There were three roughing slash unnecessary roughness penalties. One on Josh Allen by Josh Allen. Too much Josh Allen on Josh Allen violence. It's like when your older sibling would hit you with your own hand and go, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. And then you planted drugs in your older sibling's bedroom and told your parents about it and they shipped him off to boarding school. You fucking tool, Brett. Suck it, Brett. I hope I never see you again. Another flag was on Jordan Poyer for uh, this hit and one on Chad and Mama for this hit. If you're British and you're wondering why these plays were flagged, your guess is as good as mine. And I've been watching football for over 30 years. The officiating in this game was more misaligned than a British smile. Oh shit, I just lost the British. Challenge. The real losers in this game were the Bills depth chart. Uh, they lost linebacker Matt Milano a week after losing corner Trey White for the season. Both guys playing at the top of their game. Maybe Milano is the best linebacker in the league, and just like last season, as soon as the Bills really started to look dangerous, the injury bug bit, and that bug is a thousand black widows. Loser, Trevor Lawrence going to the Daniel Jones College of Ball Security. He lost two fumbles in this game. One was more of a tremendous play by the Bills defense, but he had 12 fumbles last season. Three so far this year. It's the only glaring weakness in his game and I hope he fixes it. Winners, all of the Jags that weren't those Lawrence fumbles or bad snaps. I was very impressed with Jacksonville's defense. They nearly shut the Bills out in the first half and besides what was essentially a garbage time touchdown, kept Buffalo's offense in check. One that was the second highest scoring unit coming into this game. I think the Jags are a defensive team and they allowed just 29 rushing yards making Buffalo incredibly one dimensional. Travis Etienne and Calvin Ridley both went over 100 as T-Law put Bills Mafia in jail for what I'm assuming was on RICO charges. It's the only way you can get to the Mafia. Oh, is that Jamar Chase with another catch? I'm always fucking open. Excuse my profanity, I'm sorry. Winners, the Bears offense, that's right. DJ Moore went off for 230 yards and three touchdowns, making him the greatest receiver in Bears history, which officially also makes him the most successful DJ in Chicago since, well, since DJ Connor. I can't work this day. Which is what we all thought Justin Fields was saying about the Bears offense. Well, he learned to work the damn thing the last two weeks, and the Bears are, dare I say, a fun team to watch. I hope so. Fields did something uh, pretty impressive. He threw four touchdowns while only completing 51.7% of his passes while maintaining a passer rating of 125. He had a few great throws that weren't caught, and oddly, his worst throw was caught by Khalil Herbert, which also injured Herbert's ankle. Regardless, the Bears got their first 40-point game since 2020. Uh, careful though, if Cole Komet keeps swinging like this after he scores, the Mets are gonna make him one of the highest paid players in baseball. No moral victory this week, all the losers lost. Instead, I'll give the Eagles their best win of the season. First of all, Philly, you held Puka Nakua to just seven receptions, 71 yards, and a TD. 
any other defense, he has 200 yards and nine touchdowns. And nobody try and tell me Cooper Cup had 118 yards and is Stafford's favorite target again. This was the Eagles defense. Jalen Hurts in this game was on a mission, but instead of converting unsuspecting poor people into Christians, he was single-handedly willing the Eagles offense to victory over a gritty Rams defense. He eclipsed 300 passing yards for the second week in a row. Both Godert and A.J. Brown hit the century mark, but Hertz also led the team in rushing yards with 72 and another rushing TD. And that's right, Jamar Chase is always fucking open. Excuse my profanity, I'm sorry. My losing team slash unit, the Broncos defense, giving up 177 yards to Brees Hall. Hall was the leading rusher this week, and Denver is allowing 187.6 yards per game, worst in the league. But I already recapped that horrific game here. But some salt to pour on my own wounds, like a sadist? Look at all of these Broncos defensive stats. They are literally the worst in the league in all of them. My winners, NFL running backs, David Montgomery Burns, the defense again. And he scored in every game he's played in for the Lions this season, 109 yards for David Montgomery Burns. Excellent. Jonathan Taylor held out and it worked. However, if he doesn't have a great season, he may have murdered all hope for any future running back to get paid. He got paid the 14 million per year he wanted. Also, Zach Moss could rip a 50 plus yard touchdown and finish the game with 165 yards rushing and two TDs. Oh my God, was Jim Irsay right the entire time? It's like dumping $100,000 into a new stock and then seeing an old stock you spent $500 on 10x. Zach Moss, the most scrimmage yards for Indy since 2021. Guess who did it then though? Jonathan Taylor. And then Davon A-Chan, uh, just seven touchdowns in three weeks. He's averaging 12.1 yards per attempt on 38 attempts, but that's insane. A-Chan has 460 career rushing yards, five rushing touchdowns on, again, just 38 carries. He leads the league in yards per carry, obviously. He is second in yards behind Christian McCaffrey, and he played just a couple snaps before week three. And Travis Etienne was a real difference maker for the Yegi Wars. 136 yards, two TDs in that game. Easily his best game of the year, and I hope the Jags remember to feed him. My winning offense, the Bengals, specifically the Bengal boys, who finally get to put out a happy song this week. Come on in the, desert. the Bengals look like a neutered version of themselves for four weeks, but it turns out all Joe Burrow's old bones needed was that warm desert air, finally crossing the 300 yard mark through the sky. Joe Mixon had 81 yards on the ground and Trenton Irwin had a very random eight receptions, but it was Jamar Chase who came up big with the first three touchdowns of his season. 15 receptions, breaking a Bengals team record, nearly 200 receiving yards, and helping the Bengals to a 14 point road victory. Chase posted an image of 7-11 after the game. A lot of people think that's a reference to him being always open. But I know it means that the Bengals offense has too much good stuff. Oh, God damn it, that's AM PM. And this week's Fuck the Refs game, brought to you by my coffee company, benchwarmerbrew.com, goes to the Chiefs Vikings game. Not only is this actually one of my best beans I've ever found, we've, we've sold so many of these things, we're sold out of the ground coffee. You can still order the whole beans, but if you want the ground, just come back in a few days. It should be back in order by October 16th. But I'm glad you guys like it. This is not an excuse. All right, Kansas City, I think you win this game regardless. But after you, Chiefs, got by the Jets, thanks to some dubious officiating last Sunday, it happened again. It happened again, okay? Uh, this time, though, it was even more egregious, not only does Legereus Sneed get away with terrible pass interference here in the end zone? He somehow then allowed a warning when it comes to taking off his helmet on the field too. TJ Watt got penalized, remember? For the same thing at the end of the Steelers game. But I guess that's a lesson that if you want to bend the rules and get away with it, you need to be on Taylor Swift's favorite football team. Although Travis Kelsey never had any injury issues, until he started dating Taylor. Okay, Jamar, you made up for the lack of production the last few weeks. I'm always fucking open. And finally, on Monday Night Football, how'd the Packers play against the Raiders? Like cheeks. Losers, 
Packers fans trying to learn how to watch bad football. <laughs> Guys, you're losing your minds. Packers fans are the rookies of watching their team hurt them every week. Welcome, Jordan Love. Had a, a rough night throwing three picks. None worse than this one to Robert Spillane. How do you Spillane that one, Jordan? AJ Dillon scored a touchdown. Jimmy Garoppolo had an ugly butt clenching pick as well, but Green Bay's night was best summed up when we saw edge rusher Preston Smith in one-on-one -on -one coverage with Devontae Adams. Packers fans are saying Joe should be kicked in the berries for letting that happen. Putting an edge defender on Devontae Adams is like defending Ending your home against an invasion with a banana. Winners getting a nice win in prime time, but Raiders fans knowing that Mark Davis may officially also hate Josh McDaniels. Mick Dune Buggy may have gotten the win here thanks to Marcus Peters making an illegal horse collar tackle to stop Christian Watson from getting into the end zone. But it was McDaniels electing to not use a timeout before halftime, which would have given the Raiders offense a good 40 extra seconds to try and score a touchdown instead of settling for another field goal. That made Mark Davis allegedly call McDaniels an asshole. Winners, Zach Tom. 10 out of 10 belly flop, Zach Tom. Boom, thanks for watching That's Good Sports. The real winners and losers, week five. Come back tomorrow for the power rankings. Oh, I think they're gonna get a little weird this week. Oh, I thought they were already weird, Brandon. You ain't seen nothing yet.